you all for coming. Towards the end of my capstone journey, I got to meet with Mr. Don Breeder, who is a Vietnam War veteran and a retired Army Ranger. Um, the goal of our meeting was for him to teach me more about navigation with a map and a compass. Um, as we talked about navigation, our conversation naturally came around to his time in Vietnam and his ranger training. He told me lots of interesting stories. He told me stories about getting lost during training exercises and missing rendezvous and rations because of poor navigation. And he told me about navigating in the jungles of, Viet of Vietnam um, where you had to keep track of where you were by the slope of the ground because of the dense bushes. Um, and then having to call in airstrikes um, and not accidentally call it in on yourself. Um, and he also taught me how to determine exactly where I was based on the landmarks around me and then locating those on a map. All of his stories and lessons had the same theme. If you wanted to navigate successfully, the key was attentiveness. If you weren't attentive to your surroundings, you might run out of provisions, you might accidentally call in an airstrike on yourself, or you could get hopelessly lost just miles from your car. I grew up outside. I grew up in Uganda, where life is lived outside. Um, as a kid, I spent more than 80% of my awake time outside. So I was inside to sleep, do school, sometimes a lot of edit outside, and eat. But my rest of, the rest of my time was spent running, playing, climbing, and looking for fruit. So here are some pictures. Um, as you can see, it's a lot of playing outside. We also have a lot of bonfires in our backyard. Um, more playing outside. This is me in the garden. Um, gardening is a big part of life there. Um, almost every Saturday we would go for about two hours um, and work in the garden. Um, and almost everybody has a garden, um, so it's really big there. Fruit is also really big. In both of these pictures we're eating jackfruit. Um, the eating part is a very communal time, as you can see in the bottom picture. But I really enjoy um, looking for fruit, climbing trees to get fruit, and then eating the fruit with others. Um, coming from such an outdoor-oriented culture, um, when I was brainstorming capstone topics, almost all of my top choices involved outdoor activities. Um, and when I finally did decide on hiking and backpacking, my decision was largely based on my desire to experience and explore God's creation. This is a desire that has been instilled in me by my parents through the numerous hikes and walks that we have taken as a family. And I'm really grateful to them for this path. But one of the main things that I love about hiking and exploring um, is the opportunity to see the beauty and glory of God as you explore his creation. Um, hiking. Um, and backpacking provides a unique front row seat to the magnificent, life-changing complexity and masterful handiwork of our God. Based in the midst of this divine masterpiece, hiking allows us to build and develop community with God, each other, and ourselves. Now, when I say build community with God, some of you might be wondering what that looks like or how you can even have it, because today God is so often portrayed as just this distant, being that watches us and judges us when we mess up. But when I say community with God, I simply mean being in awe with God and having a real desire to know Him and strive after Him. Um, and just realizing that He's with us, that He loves us, and that He's involved in everything around us. We can pursue this community with God through experiencing and exploring His creation while we hike. I got an opportunity to do this this past fall when I did a solo overnight trip to Bison Peak. Bison Peak really is a unique place. Um, I had some pictures, but because of the airplane. Um, so all around the peak, there are these massive stone towers. And things. Um, and there are these huge rock ridges. Um, and so as you're walking up to the peak, it's really like you're walking um, through a garden of giants almost. And then the day I went up was a really gorgeous day. Um, so from the peak you could see all around. Um, so that's Bison Peak. Um, 
These are the um, monoliths that are all around the peak. Uh, these are the rock bridges. Um, and then this is the view from the peak. So on one side, there was this sea of clouds. And you can't really see the other peaks, but the other peaks were almost like islands. Um, and then opposite this were these really cool rolling hills, which then smoothed out into a valley that had farms and ranches. And then right in front of me was the whole rock garden stretched out before me. Um, and so this view and just the massiveness of the stone pillars really declared the power and awesomeness of God. And it's much like Paul says in Romans 1.20 when he writes, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. As I was up there, I was just awestruck by the landscape, and it really reminded me that no matter how much we as humans try, we're no match for God, and we'll never be able to fully comprehend Him. This awe and wonder can and should lead us to a place of praising, worshiping, and reflecting on God's power and goodness. As I was up there, it really was hard not to reflect on God's might and what He is capable of. As I was up there, I also experienced a renewal of my faith and trust in God. So as I was setting up camp for the evening, I was a bit anxious and afraid of spending the night alone and so far away from other people. Um, but as I was setting up camp, I just remembered a text that one of my friends had sent me earlier. And the text was just reminding me to trust God and not worry about what might happen. So as I remembered this text, I just took a deep breath and asked God for peace and security. And after this, I didn't feel the need to worry or be anxious about what might happen. Um, and I really felt that I could just trust God. Um, even now, I'm able to transfer this trust as, as I'm getting ready to graduate from high school and going into university. Um, I can be anxious and worried and wonder if I'm making the right choice, um, but this trust just really helps me know that God has a plan and that He will work things out. Being outside also provides a unique opportunity to talk with God without the distractions of everyday life. It's so much easier to hear and receive from God when we're surrounded by God's glory. It's not that you can't hear when you're at home, um, but it's just that it's so much easier and we're so much more open when we're out in creation surrounded by God's glory. Um, there's a camp um, in Uganda on the shores of Lake Victoria that really gets this idea. So whenever they have a camp, um, they have a session before breakfast where they send the campers out onto this hillside with just their Bibles to have time with God. And it really is amazing how much easier it is to hear and receive when you're out there just reading your Bible and looking at this. God's power, when you're out there, God's power is no longer this distant concept. Instead, it becomes a reality. You're no longer just reading an account of God's glory. Instead, you're experiencing it firsthand. This past fall, I also got to interview Mr. Wall about his experience with hiking in the outdoors. He told me a lot of interesting stories. Um, there was one story that really stuck with me, and this story was about a solo trip that he went on. And about this trip, he said, I remember sitting on the side of a lake and just laughing with God, just totally embracing his love and laughing about everything that I thought was a problem at the time. When we take the time to sit and be attentive, it really, fantastic things can happen. I'm not saying that every time you go out, you're going to have a revelation or a vision. But taking that time just brings the potential for change and impact. And even if you don't have some spectacular revelation, it just brings a freshness and clarity of mind. Um, being out in nature also brings an appreciation and a realization of the blessing that we have. Throughout this year, I've been reading My First Summer in the Sierra by John Muir. John Muir is a Scottish-American naturalist, and he was one of the first voices for the preservation and conservation of our wildernesses here in America. And throughout this book, he has these vivid descriptions of what he's seeing, and these descriptions really portray the beauty of nature and the deep appreciation that he had for nature. But as he's describing these things, he points out the toll that um, society is taking on nature and how we're really penetrating it and destroying it. Um, and as I was reading this, it made me realize that when we're truly in appreciation of God's creation, 
that a response to protect and preserve that creation should naturally arise. It poses the question of how, when you're really in awe with God, how can you sit back and watch his artwork be destroyed? But as I was thinking about this, I also realized that we need to be careful that we don't start worshiping the creation instead of the creator. Paul warns us about this in Romans 1.25 when he writes, They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator. As we are hiking, we must keep God at the forefront, and we mustn't fall back into worshiping the creation instead of the Creator. Hiking alone and being outside alone also provides a unique opportunity for clarity, growth, and development within ourselves as individuals. Now, like I said earlier, um, I've grown up outside, but until this past year, I'd never really taken um, an intentional time to go outside and be by myself for an extended amount of time. So my first real experience with a solo was the senior solo this past fall. For the senior solo, the goal is to take eight hours um, and just go out into nature and be by yourself. You have your Bible um, and some prompts that they give you, and you're allowed to take a bit of food and water. But other than that, you're just out there by yourself. And this solo was actually quite hard, with, hard for me because I found it hard to just sit and be by myself. I found it hard to really face my thoughts and I found it hard to be alone for such a long amount of time. But this really is the purpose of the solo. The purpose is to challenge us and force us to think about what we really want. And I didn't have a revelation or a vision or anything, but I just, coming out of the solo, I felt a general clarity and freshness of mind as I went into my senior year and my capstone experience. This solo was quite hard for me, but it did have a unique and positive impact on my capstone journey and my senior year. When we're out in nature alone, um, there is also the opportunity for space and time to reflect on, God, on life and the world around us. This um, past year, I got to interview Mr. Greg Robinson, who is a professor at John Brown University. Um, and he teaches outdoor leadership ministries. Um, and one of the main aspects of hiking that he focused on was the change of pace that it brings and the ability the, to slow down that it brings when you're hiking. Um, when you're hiking, um, you're able to step out of the rush and take time to walk, to actually, to walk and actually reflect on God and what He has done, what He can do, and what He will do. Now, in addition to these solo experiences, I also got to do a number of hikes and experiences with others and with friends and family. And hiking with others brings the opportunity for relationships, both old and new, to be renewed, strengthened, and built. This spring, um, my family and I went on a snowshoeing trip with the Vanderbilt family. Um, this trip really showed the value and the effect that good relationships can have on our lives um, and how hiking can cultivate those. This trip was way more enjoyable than my other solo experiences. I think if I had done it solo, I definitely wouldn't have enjoyed it as much, and I wouldn't have the same desire to continue to explore snowshoeing that I do now. The difference between this hike and my solos was the community. Um, and Mr. Robinson would say the difference was the shared experience. When I asked Mr. Robinson what the difference between hiking solo was as opposed to hiking with others. He said the difference was to after the hike, the ability to remember with those that you went on. So instead of just remembering something and then telling them what happened, you're remembering together. Um, this is really powerful. This trip goes to show the impact and the importance that good relationships can have on our lives and how hiking provides an opportunity for us to build and develop those relationships. As we are out hiking, we're also able to step out of the artificial worlds and relationships, um, worlds and, yes, relationships that our society has created. Social media, in particular, has cheapened relationships and has attempted to remove the value of true community from our lives. Social media has created a culture that's bent inward and focused heavily on the individual and our achievements. But when you're out in the wilderness, you don't have access to Wi-Fi or the internet, and you're forced to look up from your phone and actually pay attention to what's around you. And what happens when we actually pay attention is that our eyes are open, 
and we begin to see the beauty and glory of God as we observe his creation. And it's not just social media that we get to escape from when we're out in nature, but we also get to step out of the busyness of society. So often our world runs at the speed of light, and we're left with little, if any, time to reflect on God and what's around us. But hiking in the midst of God's wonderful creation changes the pace and forces us to look up and pay attention to what's around us. Without the stress and busyness and without the insincerity of social media, hiking allows us to pause, reflect, and actually be with God. Hiking, backpacking, walking, and being outside disconnects us from the false reality of man's glory and reveals God's glory in his presence in creation and our relationships. Hiking attentively causes us to slow down and evaluate our surroundings. Now, this attentiveness is key. Attentiveness is the key to navigating. It's also the, the key to building and developing community with God, each other, and ourselves. And attentiveness is the key to noticing God's glory and creation, which brings us closer to Him, others, and these things in turn bring a clarity and refresh ourselves. This attentiveness to God's glory and creation is similar to what Paul says in Romans 1.20 when he writes, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. We have no excuse for not being attentive to God's manifestation of His glory through creation. As you go out, I would challenge you to actively strive to be attentive to what's around you and to pay attention to God's hand in your life. You'll find that it will truly make a difference.